Hi. Now, in the previous video, I showed you how to derive these two sets of identities. But what I want to do in this video is now show you how we can use just some of them to express cos cubed theta in the form of a cos 3 theta plus b cos theta. Now, the method I'm going to show you is true not just for cos cubed theta, but it's a method that we can use for expressing any powers of cos theta and then turning it into multiple angles. Now, to do this, all we need to work with for cosine is this one here and this identity here. So what I'll do is I'll just remove this identity and this identity so that we can concentrate on the two top ones. Now for cos cubed theta or any power of cos theta, we take this identity here and write down 2 cos theta. So if we write down 2 cos theta, and then what we do, because we want cos cubed theta, we cube this result. So whatever power we have up here, if it was cos to the power 4 theta, we'd write 2 cos theta to the power 4, and so on. And 2 cos theta, we saw, was identical to z plus z to the minus 1. So we can write this down as being identical then to z plus z to the power minus 1, and all of this is cubed. Now what we need to do now is expand this bracket. And one way that we can do it is by using the binomial expansion, a plus b to the power n. I'm assuming that you're familiar with it. So if we expand this according to that formula then, where a is z, b is z to the power minus 1, and n is the 3, then what we've got is 3c0, and then we've got a to the power n, which would be z to the power 3, and then b to the power 0, b being z to the minus 1. z to the minus 1 then, to the power 0. Then we move on to the next term, and continue the process. So it's going to be 3c1, z to the power 2, and then z to the power minus 1, all to the power 1. Next term will be 3c2. Reduce the power on this z, so it's z to the power 1 now, and increase the power on z to the minus 1. So z to the minus 1 goes up now to the power 2. And then you get your final term, plus 3c3, and then this term's power decreases by 1, so it's z to the power 0, and this one goes up by 1. So it's z to the power minus 1, all to the power 3. Well, when we tidy this up, okay, 3c0 is 1, z to the minus 1, all to the power 0 is 1, so you've just got z cubed. And then 3c1 is 3, z to the power minus 1 to the power 1 is z to the minus 1, so z squared times z to the minus 1 is simply z, and then you've got times 3, so plus 3z. When it comes to 3c2, 3c2 is 3, so we've got plus 3, and as for the z's, we've got z to the minus 1 all squared is z to the minus 2, multiply it with z to the 1, and you've got z to the minus 1. So you've got 3z to the minus 1, and for the last term, 3c3 is 1, z to the naught is 1, and z to the minus 1, all cubed, is z to the minus 3. So we've got plus z to the minus 3. And when you get to this stage, what we do is we now think about using this identity here, trying to pair up terms of the form z to the power n plus z to the minus n. So that would mean that we need to pair up the z cubed with the z to the minus 3. You should always find you get pairs like this. If you don't, then suspect that you've made a mistake. 
And then here, these two pairs, okay, we can pull out 3 as a common factor, and we've got 3 multiplied by z plus z to the power minus 1. So I'll put this in brackets, not that we need to, but it just kind of shows you that pairing. So in any of these examples that you do, whatever the power is, you should find that you will always be able to pair up groups like this. You might need to take out a common factor on occasions, but nonetheless you should be able to create this pairing. Now we can use that idea for z cubed plus z to the minus 3, n is clearly the power 3. So that's going to be the same as 2 cos 3 theta. So we've got 2 cos 3 theta here. And then for this term, it's going to be plus 3 times, and z plus z to the minus 1 is a special case of this result when n is 1. And you just get 2 cos theta. OK, 2 cos theta. Now, if I expand this bracket as well, I could have done it at any of these stages here. But if I just come down here and we'll just put in what we get. 2 cubed, which is 8, and then we've got cos theta all cubed. So that's the same as cos cubed theta. Now, it was cos cubed theta that we wanted. so. That means I've just got to divide both sides by 8. And if I divide both sides by 8, I've got cos cubed theta is identical to 2 eighths cos 3 theta. And then for this, we've got 3 times 2 is 6. And I'm also dividing now by 8. So we've got 6 eighths cos theta. And I can reduce this down again because we've got cos cubed theta here is identical to 2 eighths, which is 1 quarter. 1 quarter then cos 3 theta plus and 6 eighths cancels down to 3 quarters. 3 quarters then cos theta. So you can see that I've written it now in this format. Something cos 3 theta plus something cos theta. If we were asked to work out the values of a and b, a would have been a quarter and b would have been three quarters. So it has that particular format. So I hope that's given you an idea then on how to work with these. Okay, Whatever power of cos theta then that you are given, just write 2 cos theta to that power It'll be identical to z plus z to the power minus 1, all to whatever power that you write here. Expand out using the binomial expansion. Clean up, and you should be able to pair off your terms in this format. And then just work out what each of these terms comes to, and obviously just work out what cos to the power n of theta is by dividing by whatever value you've got in the front there. OK, so hope that sees you through then on that type of identity. Now in my next video, what I want to do is show you how we handle sine theta when it's to a given power. And it's dependent on whether the power is an odd number or an even number. Methods are fairly similar to this, but nonetheless, we uh, do need to take extra care. So I'll show you those particular types next.